the lab is basically uh, dedicated to field bus. We've started adding wireless to it as well. But basically it's dedicated to the field bus. We do some DCS training. Uh, we have a DCS course, to hold, uh, of course. DCS course, of course, yeah. Uh, so you see we've got five stations. Uh, actually there's six, one in the back that I can grab as a throw down station if I need it out of desperation. I try to do two people per station, uh, which means 10 people in the class. Uh, I usually register 12 people in our credit class because two will drop or decide not to show up. Uh, well, that hasn't been happening lately, so I have to re revisit that. But two people per station. The stations have, uh, we basically have airflow control going on uh, along with a uh, shutdown system with the air pressure. It's all being run on field bus. It's all controlled in the field. We can move it to the host at any time we want to and demonstrate that as well. So you can see we have the complement of test gear for them to use, with, uh, and including some pH standard DP cells, pressures, temperatures. Uh, we're doing some math with the temperatures and all too for cascade control. Of course, a variety of device couplers, uh, things that people are no longer going to make. But you know, yeah, well, but I've got stone L. So I can throw some stone L up there and run it if I have to. That stone L, I would just... Real simple. When I do a lab, and it's, to me it's all about the labs. I can teach theory all day long. But until they get their hands into it, they're not going to get the gut feel. So it's all about labs for me. That's why I do labs in the same location I do the lecturing. That way when we have a question, somebody has a concern, a comment, or like that Russian girl that said, I don't think I can put seven control loops on one segment. Time out. I manage the time. Let's do it. Let's do it now. And let everybody take part, witness it, and all that. And then when we talk about it back to the theory, they've had their hands in it more. It's easier to understand. This is, I'm sorry, it's my old military training, technical academy, right? How you're supposed to do it. This, and I believe that. So we do uh, two students. We do lots of labs, 60% uh, hands on, easily. Uh, so we're spending a lot of time. We break the equipment and make them fix it. Uh, the standard stuff. Uh, they'll build the segment, say, on Delta V, on port number two, with whatever equipment they want to use, build it up, make it work, and then they'll move it over to another host uh, and uh, apply the same learning. So, uh, so, yeah, you can see in the back, look back here, the, this is the HSE demo. Yeah. So, I don't know, we've had it plugged in for, what, seven years? <laughs> Okay, so, uh, oh, uh, yeah, running it on the uh, control of the field. Uh, so we're just rocking over with it, uh, and that's as much for demonstration because it also gives me a platform to you know, show that things work. Uh, the speed operation is the interesting part, because we can actually go in and manage the delay time on each one of those for uh, now. And uh, again, a lot of it is just proving what does or doesn't work. And uh, you know, while I like success and I like the students to have success, uh, there are times when it doesn't work. No matter what we try, it is not going to work. And so that gives them an opportunity to see that. Uh, and that's when we send them to the foundation website. I say, look at the bottom of the list. Look, there's a name there. <laughs> Call that sucker up. Quit wasting your time trying to fix a capability file. You know, get the powers that be involved. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just let it keep running. Yeah, just Four-course analyzer uh, course is becoming a eight-course analyzer degree. Uh, and this is all because the industry came to us and said they need analyzer people. They desperately need them. Nobody's teaching it. It's too expensive to send them to every possible vendor school. Nobody understands the basics. So we said, hey, give us some support and we'll start building it. So we started that. There's still some work to be done here. I'm not going to allow them to uh, fully use these until they totally isolate this room and put in some additional ventilation and some security measures uh, for when they start bringing some gases in. Some things called vent moves, a couple little things. But they can still do 80% of everything they have to do with the existing stuff. And again, it gets them started. So uh, uh, we've actually had a large demand students on this, albeit some older equipment, we are getting some newer stuff here uh, next year. So, so yeah.
we've got these are all four identical stations, back to back. Uh, we like them because we can do full temperature control. We got chill water coming in. We got a heater in the back. We got a variable speed drive. Uh, there's MOVs that are not here, but we have them on this bolt them up here. We can run MOVs as well. Uh, fail open, fail close, pressurized tanks, bubbler systems, regular levels. You know, of course, all the temperature stuff. So it gives us pretty broad range of controls with uh, pretty fully developed labs. Uh, these are we can't take credit. DAC designed these. All we did was go out and, you know, we specified what we wanted, uh, but we, it wasn't that big of a, of a deal. I, I wanted to specify a few things. Now, the interesting part here is that, of course, we can add anyways transmitters if we want to here. It's all pretty well quick connects and uh, power and all. There's uh, jumper panels all over the place. So you can run it. We have standard control on it with Honeywell. But we can also take it off of this to uh, patch panels that we have and through the patch panels, and we're not going to do this till probably the end of this year, we're dropping a cable in that ties to our field bus classroom so that we can just mount the field bus transmitters, go to the patch panel, and operate all four units on field bus control. Uh, actually, not that expensive either. It's uh, probably $280,000 for all four units. Uh, that sounds like a bit of money, but that's fully evolved uh, copyright uh, open copyright or fair use of all their labs and about that many lab manuals and the labs are just fully built so the instructor doesn't have to sit and play a game of what lab should they do. It's already been built and tested to just make the students do the labs and uh, good to go. This is also our Cal lab so we have the various computers with uh, in some cases heart modems tied to them, uh, fluke software on uh, a few other software. There's, uh, field mate software, some of those pieces, so we also do calibration. Primarily analog and standard stuff, and we do some field bus calibration. Most of that's done in the other lab. Uh, so it's, you know, nice little, uh, you know. Interestingly, the people who like this the most are our industrial clients with our experienced technicians. They eat it up. They love it. They love being able to come down here and play and, and in some cases learn what they've been doing for 10 years and they have a chance to play in a safe environment, you know, not being hit on by everybody in their company, and finally figure some things out and play with it. So anyway, that's uh, this is all part of the, you know, used as part of the DOL courses too. Like I said, we're uh, knocking around with it. Stainless valve trees. So same thing, that we've got a heart valve, a field bus valve, uh, and then a bypass, manual bypass. So operate the plant. If the operators want to run it, play games with it, which they'll be running uh, Honeywell uh, 410 uh, with the standard analog controls and stuff. We're running it on Honeywell with uh, experience with the, with the series, uh, or series 7. Yeah, right. The great uh, thing about the Series 7, or I don't know if you're running Honeywell, it has uh, release releasing.